Get your decade ahead horoscope now at NadiaShaw.com. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of July 7, 2019. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out right now. And it is one of varied energies. On the one hand, we have energy that is contemplative, but can also be quite boastful. We've got energy that is just erratic, but we've also got energy that is strong and secure. You add to this truly fortunate light and fun energy, inspired, even miraculous energy with us. Well, it is a very mixed bag right now, just perfect for a period between eclipses. Yes, we are still between eclipses, which means we are in eclipse season. The veil between the worlds is especially thin right now. And it becomes that much easier to recognize what deeper spiritual lessons are playing out in our lives. And I think that Mercury retrograde is actually going to help us with this. Right out of the gate as we start this week, Mercury is standing still in the sky and will technically and officially go retrograde. But part of what makes this particular Mercury retrograde season so notable is the role of Mars. Mars will be right there with Mercury. Mercury is essentially hovering over Mars at this time, tapping into the energy of Mars that much more. Now, if you think back, it was right around June 16 that Mercury met Mars in the sky. When these two planets met, it was as Mercury retrograde season was beginning. Now, these two planets first met in the sign of Cancer. Now, as Mercury officially goes retro, it will be these two planets together again, but this time in the sign of Leo. And these two planets will meet again once we move towards the end of summer. And that is going to be notable as well. By then, both of these planets will have moved into the sign of Virgo. Now, of course, I'll be here to talk about it every step of the way. But when you think about the energy of Mars, Mars is, um, is very much about the show of power. We can understand power very differently, right? All the planets in their own way represent a different type of power, and we are connected to that. And so different type of power that we have within us, the varied and complex people that we are. It is Mars that is much more interested in the show, or some would say the performance, of power, of authority. Um, and it can be and is noted to be an energy that is quite, um, well, forceful, right? Can be aggressive as well. Now you add Mercury to the mix and it's about words. It's about being more forceful with our words. You add the energy of Leo to this as well. And it becomes about being boastful, being confident, and wanting respect. This is actually something I was uh, thinking about as I was preparing for this video, thinking about what's also coming up towards the end of the week as well, which I'll talk about in a moment. But essentially, what I thought was, sometimes you might come across a person um, who cares very much about being respected. Like, we do see this, and we see this also culturally as well. Um, this idea of not being respected, of being disrespected, uh, is seen as such an offense, a, a hugely personal thing. But what it means to be respected to a given person is so highly individual, it's so highly personal. And very often what offends us about not being respected often has nothing to do with a given moment because what you need to feel respected can be very, very different than what someone else might need. Someone else might need you to just listen, like to know that they were heard is enough to feel respected. In fact, I would say that's quite common. But for others, it's an action. For some, respect and the way that they configure it in their mind is connected to obeying someone, particularly if that is a person who considers themselves to be in a position of power. Now, ultimately, so much of power is illusionary, and to think that we have any more power than anyone else, and especially over other people, 
is illusionary as well. Yes, we can say that there are people who are particularly powerful and their choices and their decisions affect the lives of others. But a lot of that really does come down to illusion. Genuine respect is rooted in love respect that is rooted in fear well that may not actually be respect at all but some people consider it to be they think that if someone fears you they are respecting you and so as I looked at this configuration and considering the fact that it's not just about Mercury meeting Mars although this is notable but as we move towards the end of the week right around Friday is when Mars will speak with Uranus in a conversation of tension. It is a type of conversation that astrologers call a square. And it is this conversation that can be one where there are uh, certain reactions, sudden reactions, um, quick responses, uh, a sense of being impulsive, and a sense of also having our buttons pushed in some way. It's about helping us to understand what power is for us, authentic power is for us, and reaching a deeper layer to truly own what it means to be powerful as we define it. Now it is Mars right now that is in the sign of Leo. It is uh, Mercury that's in the sign of Leo as well. And this is a sign that is one of king right it's one of the ruler it is one of the leader and it is one where um, someone likely is going to want to be recognized as the ruler this is something we're going to have to watch in our own personal relationships but more importantly within ourselves as well like where is it that we think what we say goes in some contexts it does right if you live on your own or you're alone in your house uh, and you know what you want to watch and it's ready on Netflix, then yeah, what you say goes, right? As they say, everyone is a, a queen or a king of their own castle. However, where it comes to other people and getting other people to do as we want to recognize our specialness, well, so much of that can sometimes be rooted in a fundamental insecurity. So much of that can be rooted in a fundamental sense of not having a genuine and healthy respect for ourselves. And so it's interesting to me that Leo is also the sign of children. It is a sign that rules children. And I think it's because it is a sign uh, connected to the heart and a purity of heart and living true to our hearts. And it is children who often do that. It is often children who represent to us what it is like to live free of ego. But of course, the dark side of this energy is hyper ego, is this sense that we are, or you are, or I am the center of the universe, when really none of us is. We may be the center of the universe for ourselves because we're perceiving the world from our own perspective. So yes, in a sense, we are the center. And in much of the West, right, it is the individual that is the nucleus of society. In more Eastern traditions, we see the family as the nuclear of society. And in those cultures, what happens is their astrology tends to emphasize the moon much more than other placements. But it is in more Western traditions of astrology that we see a greater emphasis on the sun as the sun is symbolic of the individual. So yes, the individual being the nucleus of society, you are the center of your universe, that's wonderful. But when it is that you are expecting other people to make you the center of their universe, well, that is when we start tapping into um, some of the unhealthier um, ways in which ego can come forward. And that is something that all of us are going to have to be mindful of here with Mercury meeting Mars, uh, being impulsive in word, uh, speaking too quickly, uh, coming across as overly boastful, as egotistical, uh, without necessarily that appreciation of the heart that underlies it is one thing that we are going to have to be careful of. 
But on the other hand, where is it that we can see ourselves more lovingly? Where is it that we could be more confident, more boastful of ourselves, of our achievements, about the essential qualities we hold, about the things that we are proud of, that we've either achieved or that we are eternally? Well, that is going to be part of the distinction that I think that this Mercury retrograde is going to help us to have in our own individual lives. Now we get to the end of the week, right? And Mars squares Uranus. This tends to happen about once every year, but of course, uh, both planets can be in different signs when it does take place. But right now we're going to have like a, a few more years whenever it is that, uh, where every two years it is that Mars moves through the sign of Leo, it is going to square Uranus. So we're going to see this again a few more times uh, in the coming years while Uranus is moving through the sign of Taurus right to 2026. And it is this connection uh, that can be on the one hand surprising, right? It can be electric and eclectic. It can be interesting, certainly. I mean, I don't think that there are enough surprises in life, personally. So it can be uh, a sense of information or of a demonstration of confidence uh, that seems to come from a place of heightened ego or comes from a place of um, needing to have some sort of power over another. This can also be us right in our own lives in some way needing to connect with that energy within us that says you know hey this is what respect is for me do i feel like i have that right now or not and if you don't then what is it that needs to change and whatever it is that needs to change well this energy the key word for this above and beyond anything else is impulsive it is a very impulsive energy and so we are likely to recognize what needs to be changed, or at least think we know what needs to be changed and change it very quickly. For some people, this is going to be sweeping. It's going to feel really big, like lots of things change or something really big changed very quickly. For others though, it's going to be more of a personal process. I do think though, with this energy, that we are going to have to be mindful of how it is that we might be pushing other people's buttons as well. Are we enjoying that? Or is it that we genuinely want to bring peace to any given situation? That is actually something I've been meditating on lately. This idea of bringing peace to situations where there has been pain. And so it happens as you move through life, right? Sometimes you'll interact with others and there might be some hurt feelings. And it is the more childish part of us that wants that other person that we perceive as doing something that hurt us, that was what we call disrespectful to us. We want them to feel that same pain. But with a little bit of intention and a moment, it is so much more effective to actually contemplate and consider how it is that we can bring peace to a particular situation. And very often just the intention of the desire to bring peace is enough to put us in a space of peace. That is why we do it. That is why we choose to be a force of peace where instead, if we wanted to, we could actually perpetuate the pain that we felt. But instead to turn the energy around, to want to actually bring some sense of change in a given dynamic instead of continuing a cycle again and again, well, ultimately that, that can be the source of great power. And it actually is to be able to transform another person's state, to be able to transform your own emotional state is a great source of power. And it requires a certain amount of self-knowledge. It is ultimately ourselves that is uh, the greatest mystery. This is something that the whole field of psychology and psychiatry is based on this idea that there's this vast universe within us, within our psyche, that we could endlessly plow for more and more insight, for more and more depth, for a deeper and deeper understanding, to uncover more and more about ourselves, to get to some core truth about ourselves. And just when you think you know what that core truth is, 
here comes a whole other factor that you hadn't considered. Now, regardless of how much you intend to bring peace and regardless of how peaceful a person you think you are, if you find yourself having a particularly strong reaction in a given moment, try to be kind and gentle with yourself about that. A lot of people are gonna be uh, feeling particularly sensitive especially as we navigate towards the later part of the week, but even as we start the week as well, words can come across as more combative than are intended. And of course, with Mercury retrograde, um, miscommunications, misunderstandings become that much more likely. You add the element of Mars, and it's like not just about what's being misunderstood on a mind level, but the deeper consequences of that, uh, which can be getting an emotional rise and certain reactions out of people that maybe ultimately is not what you actually intended. So these are gonna be some things that we may want to watch. Now, it isn't all about this Martian Mars energy, okay? We have a lot of other really incredible things happening this week as well. And this comes down to maximizing the recent solar eclipse. I said it before, I'll say it again, we are in a period between eclipses. This is a very powerful time. That recent solar eclipse was one with, yes, there was an energy there that was quite heavy and exhausting for some, but there was also that beautiful energy as well between uh, this solar eclipse and Neptune that made the energy miraculous and inspiring. And as much as there was that possibility of feeling as if, whoa, the energy is way too much, there was also that sense of things just showing up that feel uh, like we've been touched by magic. Well, that energy, that exact energy, is gonna be amplified this week. And what this is gonna allow us to do is to bring forward that eclipse energy, uh, to actually ensure that it isn't just about being isolated to one particular moment, but we're able to bring it forward and ensure that it starts to create momentum for us. So part of the reason comes down to the sun. The sun will be right around Tuesday, standing across the sky from Saturn. And then as we move late into the week, we'll speak in supreme harmony with Neptune. Now it is that Neptunian connection that I absolutely love, okay? I am gonna admit to a bias here. I think that the Sun trine Neptune is one of those energies to look forward to. Yes, it can be very dreamy. It can be very filled with hope but it is an energy of magic and miracles and inspiration. If it is that you are looking to tap into the energy of the collective unconscious, particularly where it comes to artistic endeavors, uh, spiritual endeavors, you've got very powerful energy here. The sun in the sign of cancer um, tends to be one that is connected uh, to the collective. And that is why we often see people who are very strong artists, very strong performers, especially actors, they're able to tap into some very deep archetype within us. Uh, they're able to resonate with a whole lot of people. But then you add the magic of Neptune and the sign of Pisces, that sense of communion with everyone and everything. Well, we can see how not only is it an incredible time for creation, an incredible time for performance, an incredible time for healing, but also to have those efforts reach as many people as possible. Whether you wanna use this energy for meditation, whether you wanna use this energy to create something that you feel comes from source, the connection of source that you have within you, or whether you wanna use this energy to just find a way to uh, bring yourself out there, as they say, to put yourself out there, a little bit more to attract attention for your creativity a little bit more this is wonderful energy to use but there is something to keep in mind and that is the sun saturn connection now i actually see this playing out a couple of different ways so one is saturn is about what you have earned it's about paying dues it's about ensuring that you have put in the time and that the rewards you receive will be proportional so it's great that we have this wonderful magical energy of the sun and Neptune, but at the same time, in order to really maximize it, it's almost as if the universe is saying, make sure to take an honest but measured look at yourself, right? Gently, 
and with kindness, with all that you know, boastful, over-the-top, confident energy in the air, uh, come at it from a place of humility as well. See what it is that you've already done, what you've already demonstrated. That will tell you something about what it is that you have earned. And from there, by tapping into the experience that we have, from there, we're able to actually um, parlay that into some sense of truly reaching another level with whatever it is that we desire to share. So these energies can actually work together really nicely. Just the sun and Neptune in and of itself, well, that is very dreamy, right? That's belief. And so, yeah, you believe it, great, wonderful, right? And yes, your belief alone can make amazing things possible, but very often it takes Saturn as well. Just Neptune in and of itself is operating on a very energetic level, but it is Saturn that allows manifestation. It is Saturn that grounds those dreams to ensure that they actually allow you uh, to change your lived experience, to experience that sense of success or fulfillment or enjoyment or healing even, right? What is the point of healing unless it doesn't change your life in some meaningful way? And often the change that comes is just that we feel more at ease within ourselves, in our bodies, in our psyche. The point of transformation is ultimately so that we can become whom it is that we truly are, who we were created to be and not who we've been conditioned to be. And if that is the point of healing, ultimately to be whom it is that we really are, whom it is that we were created to be, well, to come at the world from that space, that is a lived experience. That is an embodied experience. That is something that you feel, but also something that you experience. To experience yourself authentically so is something that actually changes your life and so much of your life. It has a powerful momentum, a ripple effect that can change just about every part of your life for the better. So it is Saturn that's going to help in that endeavor. I also think, though, that this uh, connection between the Sun and Saturn in some way is part of the setup for next week's eclipse. Because it is going to be early next week that not only are we going to have the sun standing across the sky from Pluto, but we're also gonna have that very powerful lunar eclipse. Now that lunar eclipse will happen hand in hand with Saturn and Pluto and the south node. It is set to be uh, truly changing times. Um, but because it is a lunar eclipse, it's a lot about closure as well. Where it is that we are closing karmic ties, where it is that we are ending karmic chapters. And it is at this time that we may find ourselves um, setting up circumstances so that we do feel that sense of a space being created for the new and the next to find us in its own time. The key with Pluto and Saturn, in order to really tap into this energy for its highest potential, the key is surrender. That really is what it comes down to. If it is that you are willing to surrender your expectations, you're not fighting too hard to hold on to something, to have something go exactly the way it is that you want it to, right? You're not exerting a, an increasing amount of control but instead you flow with it, right? Whatever comes, let it. Whatever goes, let it. That is the way to maximize the blessings that Saturn and Pluto can bring. Think about all the times in which there was a situation that when it was finally over, you were really, really glad. You were like, that's a blessing that it's over. It's that kind of energy that we could welcome in now. That eclipse is something that I will talk a lot more about next week. Of course, I'm always here to talk about it as we get there. But I do want to give you a little bit of a heads up because that energy can feel very strong. That energy can feel intense and yes, exhausting as well. Just like the solar eclipse had some part of it that could be exhausting, but also had a part of it that was absolutely inspiring. So it is with this lunar eclipse as well. It is speaking harmoniously with Neptune in a type of conversation that astrologers call a sextile. That lunar eclipse coming up 
is activating powerfully so Saturn and Pluto yes those energies can be tiring but if we are willing to flow with it if we are willing to surrender to it to trust that what needs to leave will well then that is when and that is even more quickly when we're able to start tapping into the potential of Neptune the potential of Neptune to bring healing and growth and even magic as well now I've saved the best for last the energy that I'm really really excited about this week actually is happening right around Monday and that is a beautiful alignment between Venus and Uranus I love this energy okay I we have had recently a few um, like sextiles between planets and Uranus right so recently uh, I remember not too long ago we had Mercury speaking in harmony with Uranus very recently we had the Sun speaking in harmony with Uranus and now here comes Venus it's Venus's turn and this is where I think that we're really able to bring forward in some very quick and surprising moments some of the best that Venus has to offer things like pleasure and joy and possibility prosperity and yes love as well Venus is already in a strong position given that she's moving through a sign the sign of cancer and in that sign she's able to bring forward her very best qualities she likes being in that sign uh, her most loving and sensual and uh, the part of herself as a planet but as a divinity as well the part of herself that is able to trust and understands that sometimes the best things you're able to just bring them towards you that sometimes it's not about going out there and fighting for what you want sometimes it's about allowing now consider how on the same day we are having that connection between Mercury and Mars I think that is especially powerful as well because that Mars energy in Leo with Mercury yeah some of us are gonna want to go out there and fight for it right confidently boldly go out there with our words but using our words to fight for what we want but it is Venus this contrast happening at the same time that's saying if you allow if you accept you might actually just attract in uh, ways that feel like you've been touched by synchronicity in ways that move very quickly you may find yourself just attracting what it is ultimately that you most want in your heart of hearts now this energy is also lucky okay so this is a fortunate energy um, yes we have other energies there that are saying take a measured approach take a bit of a step back but we also have energy here that's saying uh, something amazing could show up <laughs> that does ask us to take a chance to take some kind of a little bit of a risk um, that asks us to think quickly on our feet but if we do we may find immense blessings available to us now surprises in love can go very well at this time trusting your instincts where it comes to financial matters can go well also but mercury is retrograde <laughs> So by the time we get there mercury is officially retrograde and as with any celestial conversation don't bet the farm never bet the farm never put yourself in a place where you feel like you must win like it's all or nothing because then you are not in an energy of abundance it is from an energy of abundance that more abundance can flow and that is part of the reminder of this time that the more it is you're going to allow yourself to recognize the abundance that is already in your life that in and of itself is a type of freedom that in and of itself is a type of lightness and from that place of freedom and lightness can come even more and what is more actually can surprise you maybe it's something that you never even thought that you wanted until it just showed up what I love about this week for us well I am gonna say I'm gonna say the Sun and Neptune I actually really love that energy I feel like no matter what happens this week and yes there are these variety of energies right now and for some it's gonna feel like one day has a completely different characteristic than another 
One moment may have a very different characteristic from another moment. And yet, it is that connection between Sun and Neptune that is going to remind us that however it is you may be judging a particular situation, life is magic. The fact that you get to live and have this experience right now, there's something that is mysterious about it, but also miraculous about it as well. It is going to be this energy that reminds us that whatever spiritual lessons are playing out right now, they truly are for the highest good, not only of all concerned, but for you. They are part of your journey towards greater love and greater wisdom. And a week like this says, with that connection between the sun and Neptune, we are able to recognize the love and wisdom playing out in all of our moments. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? What are you excited about? Let me know in the comments below. I absolutely love reading you guys and I may be doing this as a premiere. I'm not sure yet. If I'm not, I'm sorry, but welcome to the replay. If I am, uh, hello, uh, premiere people. I love hanging out with you. If you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week means for you in your sign, how it's going to speak to you in your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com, sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes. Uh, they get a monthly live event, a new moon event, a dedicated Facebook group, early access to monthly horoscopes, and more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. Synchronicity University is underway. Thank you so much to everybody who joined me live for the very first session of Summer School 2019. It was so much fun. We talked about childhood in the astrology chart. If you still wanna sign up or you just wanna get the download to that class, you can. I think that the download is gonna be available Monday. So all the students who already attended and those who want to purchase that class uh, will be able to either receive that or get that uh, once we get to some point on Monday. And so students, please be on the lookout uh, for that email notification. And uh, yes, I hope that you absolutely love that class and love that replay, but we've got lots more live classes coming up over the course of the summer. Every Saturday, uh, we are getting together live. If you can't join us live, you'll get the video download to learn from infinitely. And even if you do join us live, you'll get the video download as well. Next week's class is further thoughts on forgiveness. It was in the last session that I did a class on forgiveness. It was hugely popular. It was uh, the most registered for class of the last session. And so lots of people looking forward to that class on forgiveness um, or further thoughts on forgiveness rather. So it's part two of that initial class. Um, I'll do a little bit of a recap of the previous class just in case you weren't there and we'll build on that information. Uh, and as we move further into the summer, uh, we're gonna have a class on the part of fortune, another on the midheaven, another on astrological magic. And then we will end the session with uh, a Q&A hangout where I get to answer all your follow-up questions uh, with the classes that we just taught. If you are already registered for Synchronicity University, please do join us online on Facebook. Uh, there's a brand new Synchronicity University fan page on Facebook um, and an Instagram account uh, that I'm very excited about growing. I love being on Instagram actually. It's such a great community there. I have my personal account and then I have an account for my dog and uh, now I have a Synchronicity University account. So it's all very exciting. Um, but also there is a Facebook group for people who are registered for summer school. And so please be sure to, um, to add that. That information to join that group um, is available in the emails that we send out, letting you know about classes, sharing all the links with you and all of that. So you can actually um, join us, talk about the classes, ask your follow-up questions. Uh, and now starting next week, simulcast live so until you get the official download you'll at least be able to watch the replay on facebook in the official facebook group for summer school so again you can get so much more information uh, with the links below and i look forward to meeting you in class 
I have a bunch of live in-person events coming up that I'm really excited about. I will be in Baltimore Labor Day weekend as part of the NCGR conference, along with many world-renowned astrologers. Um, and it really is going to be such a treat. I am going to be teaching a class. I think my class is on Sunday. It's called Astrological Signatures of Long-Term Love. If you can join us live, that's great. It's got its own energy, but if you can't join us live, that's okay as well because I have taught this class with Synchronicity University, so you can download that uh, on my website as well. The other big event I have coming up is taking place in January 2020 under the light of the Saturn-Pluto conjunction that everybody's talking about. I've been talking about it as well. Um, I spoke about it in the Decade Ahead horoscope, uh, special horoscope that you can see on YouTube as well. But this conjunction, very powerful and uh, representing uh, a new sense of power for us as a collective all over the planet, around the world. And how this is going to represent in our own personal lives a sense of uh, true transformation as well. Well, it is going to be this cruise that I hope will stay with participants long after it is over. I am one of the participants. I'm not the organizer of this event. Um, I will be participating in the, in the seminars, uh, in all of the activities right along with you, along with uh, teaching a couple of things as well. I truly hope to be part of a, a journey that is a transformational experience that is one of those things where when we leave, we feel like we have transformed for the better and we can be more effective in our sphere of influence, in our communities, in our families as a result. And so, yes, I'm gonna be part of this amazing event. I'm really looking forward to it. I've never even been on a cruise before as well. Um, there are links below. You can register for the seminars on my website. And then we have all the info there for uh, the travel agent that we're working with so you can secure your room. If it is that you want a roommate so that you can share costs and reduce the overall cost to yourself, we have it set up as well where we're connecting people with roommates. And so there's lots of ways to make this happen. If it is that you are karmically called to be a part of this experience, I am sure you will find your way there and I look forward to meeting you on board. Quick heads up, I have events coming up in 2020. In May, I will be in Toronto. Uh, in September, I will be in Colorado as part of the ESAR conference. So save the date, <laughs> but I am gonna be around and I will continue uh, reaching out to friends and fans and superstars online and in person and wherever I find you. And thank you. Thank you so much for this moment with you. Thank you for sharing your sacred journey with me. It all means so much to me. Thank you for uh, affirming love and wisdom in the world. I'm grateful for all of it. Thank you again. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.